today's topic is introduction of cyber forensics i will cover what is cyber forensics what is digital evidence and its types data acquisition and its types and in the last phases of computer forensics or say cyber forensics so let's begin with cyber forensics what is cyber forensics it is a science and it provides standard procedures and techniques to identify gather and preserve the digital evidence and that particular or those digital evidence must be admissible in the court of law now question arises what is digital evidence digital evidence is information or data that is either stored in digital devices or transmitted digitally and wherein data is in the form of binary numbers that is 0 and 1 we all know that computers does not understand languages say hindi english japanese etc they communicate using the binary numbers that is 0 and 1 only and we can find digital evidence in hard disk it may be in usb drive it may be in mobile phones rams cds dvds and nowadays we use gps so data digital evidence may be available in gps also and it is very fragile in nature therefore it requires extra caution what happens is suppose you are simply copying a file during copying a file some you know bit of information may change so there are defined standard and procedures which we have to taken care of even when we are simply copying one file from one device to another device and digital evidence can be internet based it can be on multiple computers it can be on stand alone computer on mobile devices it may be mobile tabs ipads whatever evidence or digital evidence we collect that must be reliable so that we can present it to the court now you may ask why do we need digital evidence we can simply say that crime has occurred so and so did it but we have to prove it in the court of law and on that basis of digital evidence court can punish the people or cyber criminals so digital evidence are helpful in solving cyber crime cyber crime is of multiple types it may involve hacking there may be unauthorized transmission of information or data it may be identity theft case it may be malicious attacks it can be stealing of commercial secrets or say distribution of confidential information and that confidential information belong to any particular state or country sometimes cyber criminals do create fake documents such as identity proof and sometimes what happens is uh, maybe there is some email communication between the conspirators and suspects so we may need to collect those files related to the email communication so that it can be proved in the court and digital evidence or of two types volatile and non volatile as we know that data is also of two types volatile data and non volatile data likewise digital evidence is also of two types when we say volatile data what does it mean if data is volatile then if we switch off the device if we shut down the computer data is lost so that is volatile data what can be the example of volatile data system time when we switch on the computer we see on the right uh, bottom corner time is being displayed date is being displayed so as we shut down the computer it is gone then the number of people who are users who are logged on on the system number of files which are opened or have been opened recently and then network information network name infra network card etc then we may lose stuff which is stored on ram so this is all type of volatile data now we talk about non volatile data non volatile data is permanently stored data and it is stored on secondary storage devices what are the secondary storage devices it can be hard disk memory cards usb drives etc and when we switch on the computer or say device we see that 
uh, certain files we are able to see but there is data which is beyond uh, whatever is available uh, or visible it is beyond that also there are some hidden files there may be hidden partitions of hard disk or there may be unused partitions of hard disk so some relevant data may be available on these locations and uh, there are many uh, uh, file locations or ways to get the data which is not visible to the eyes and at the time of uh, digital evidence collection time is very crucial sometimes so you know if you have not copied the data sufficiently and users are using the, their device so you know and if cyber criminal has deleted some files so there are chances if that device is in use uh, that uh, you know uh, the deleted portion may be overwritten so what happens in computer is when we delete a file it is actually never deleted it resides there and when you know uh, people are using the file on that particular space some new uh, information is written if we use it regularly so there are chances that we may lose the uh, important information which may be relevant to the cyber crime or to the case so therefore time is very crucial and uh, if we say <clears throat> some points which we need to uh, you know taken care of while collecting digital evidence though there are standard operating procedures and there are standards defined for each and every step involved in cyber forensics or involved in cyber investigation but when we are talking about introduction of cyber forensics i will give you some you know glimpse uh, of important points like digital evidence must be clear and it must be understandable to the judges because it is the judge who will be deciding and uh, so it must be absolutely crystal clear and understandable then then comes originality whatever evidence you produce it must be original valid and it should provide same results if repeated or if cyber crime scene is being created uh, in the court so same output it should deliver and it must be complete in nature we cannot say that 50% is here 50% is there or some information is available some is not available so it should be complete cyber forensics is, is is evolving and it has evolved a lot also and due to emerging cyber crime now big organizations or say enterprises do have dedicated uh, cyber forensics department because in case of any incident they can find the culprit they can mitigate the risk they can provide suitable evidence to the law enforcement agencies or to the research department sometimes organization is itself a research organization so real live data is of very you know useful for them or they may pass it on to the organizations which are involved into research for you know creating good tools or say investigation purposes now we talk about data acquisition what is data acquisition it is a process of imaging or say collection of information as per standard operating procedures it is very crucial process and therefore requires utmost attention data can be acquired from hard disk usb disk memory cards mobile phones ipads etc type of data acquisition two types logical acquisition and sparse acquisition when we say logical acquisition so during logical acquisition investigators can acquire selected files and file types for example there is a cyber crime which involved email communication and investigator need to collect files related to the email only so maybe uh, they are looking only for the files which are outlook file or say outlook express file or say um, thunderbird there are multiple email clients so whatever you know email communication tool has been used or say thunderbird or outlook depending upon that they will be collecting the files so this is type of data a logical acquisition the next is a sparse acquisition so investigators herein may acquire some deleted data also not necessary what is available what is visible they collect that only so what they do 
for this type of data acquisition they image the entire disk they and they prepare the image file disk and it involves disk to image file data copying process and disk to disk data copying there is two types disk to image file and disk to disk there is a difference between these two i will not cover it today maybe some other time and disk to image file method is commonly used by the investigators while copying or imaging the disk the data acquisition format to be decided for example investigator may choose raw format or other format as provided by the particular tool specific tool there are multiple uh, vendors or tools available in the market who do provide variety of tools for uh, data collection or data copying or say imaging and they have different different formats sometimes what happens is if we are using one tool and we are copying the data using that particular tool it may not run on that particular another tool due to this format type so there is a defined methodology for data acquisition also and we need to see whether we want to collect volatile data or non volatile data or both or we have to choose the raw format type or we can depend on any particular tool now we talk about phases of Uh, cyber forensics first one is the response as soon as any incident occurs and reported cyber forensics team role begins say for example there is a organization and it is having dedicated cyber forensics department and their cyber security team reports one incident so that the, the moment incident is reported cyber forensics team is activated what they will do they will look for the search and seizure they will look for the devices involved in the incident whether any device is infected or not if it has been infected so they will decide whether they would like to be that device on computer or they want to isolate that or they want to isolate and seize that to investigate it further it depends upon the cyber crime type then uh, what will happen if they do this it will block the cyber criminals entry into organizations network if they isolate or if they isolate and seize the device then comes the evidence collection after proper search and seizure of devices evidence collection process begins and this is also again as per defined procedures and standards evidence collection will be done from those devices which are affected in that particular incident then come the securing the evidence once we have collected the information we have to be very uh, careful about securing that and protect that evidence because as we discussed earlier digital evidence is very fragile in nature and we should not lose any bit of information therefore we secure the evidence after securing it comes data acquisition part from that device investigators will acquire the data with proper care and they will decide how much and what kind of information they want to acquire from that device so but they will be very careful about integrity of the evidence they because it must remain intact after acquisition they will be doing the data analysis this is the next step so data is analyzed and specific data that is useful for that particular cyber crime or particular incident that is uh, analyzed so that it can be presented to the court of law if necessary and if they don't want to present it to the court of law there is no legality involved so they will be decide what kind of uh, you know data they require for their research or to mitigate the risk or to proactively take the for take further uh, security measures and of course a cyber security team is also involved if it is within the organization for you know so that they can work hand in hand for better results after analysis comes the evidence assessment evidence assessment takes place with respect to the occurred incident and then comes the documentation and reporting and it starts again in accordance with the code of law and as per defined sops as opis is standard operating procedures and if necessary and if it is a legal case then expert witness testimony may take place 
it depends upon the case so to summarize what we discussed today we understood what is cyber forensics what is digital evidence and types uh, what is data acquisition and types then various phases of cyber forensics this is all for today you may write in the comment box if you are benefited out of this session and if you are looking for any specific topic or if you want any detailed information on any topic you may write in the comment box